Remember when we used to cram into tiny, overcrowded pubs, brushing past diseased people just to get to the front of the bar so you could pay £5.50 for a pint? God, I miss that. You guys remember Uber journeys? Well, probably not if you were drunk, as those memories are usually quite hazy. I'm pretty sure this is my drunk. What are you talking about? But I bet your Uber driver remembers the three-star rating you gave them because, I don't know, you didn't like the music they were playing. They didn't talk to you. Or they did talk to you. <laughs> well, that rating could have decided whether they still have their job during these COVID-19 job cuts. Uber has already cut a big chunk of its staff due to the coronavirus and is considering cutting another 20%. Um, how do they decide who stays and who goes? I don't know. <laughs> and I don't and I don't mean to accuse you of getting Uber drivers fired. <laughs> it's not the point of this video. What I want to talk about is the strange concept of giving people's work a star rating. Um, as good as star ratings are for choosing, you know, what film to watch next or where to eat or what to buy next on Amazon, when it seeps into the actual work that people do, that surely creates a lot of stress for them when suddenly anyone has the power to, you know, rank the service they provide. And who knows if it will just stop there. From lighthearted poking fun to much darker satire, ranking systems in media are used to exaggerate our human desire to be praised, recognized, validated, maybe just acknowledged in our social circles. No matter how distant and spread out that circle is, no matter how real or manufactured the interactions are, your star rating represents your social status. Thank you. But I don't want to talk about TV. Where do you think we are? Who, who do you think this... I am. <laughs> I played Neocab recently. That's my segue. Like a good Black Mirror episode, Neocab paints a picture of an alternate futuristic world that's not too far removed from reality if we all went off the deep end. In Neocab, you play as Lena, one of the only human driver for hires left in a world enveloped by automation and AI. Lena must earn a living, keep her passengers happy to maintain a driver rating of at least four stars, and avoid emotionally burning out in the process. Which sometimes isn't easy, like, look at this drunk guy, throw up in the back of my car, and then deny it straight up, like, oh, you can't prove that I did it. I mean, I just saw you do it, you dick. You bent down and now it reeks of vomit. I called him out on it and he gave me one star. Like, what the f dude? Isn't there a fine for throwing up in a taxi? You, you can't just walk out, you twat. <laughs> I couldn't call him that in the game, unfortunately. You'll notice Lena's sweet looking bracelet turned red after giving this douchebag a ride because he made her angry. The feel grid is one of Neocab's many futuristic bits of tech. Essentially, a fancy cybernetic mood ring with four colour groups that represent your emotional state, ranging from positive and negative, hot and cold. In Neocab, your mood limits certain dialogue options. You're too anxious to open up to a passenger, too depressed to make small talk, or too angry to hold your tongue. It's a nice twist on the usual formula that locks options behind skill levels or how far along the requisite good or evil path you are. It does take some control away from the player though, the same way you can't always control your own emotions. That might put some people off, but I really appreciated it as someone who tries to make rational decisions in these kind of games to up the realism, perhaps to an embarrassing so degree. Like not sleeping with everyone on the Normandy because, well, I mean, not. that's not the mark of a good captain. I'm leading these people to war against a highly superior alien race that intends to decimate all other life in the known universe, and they expect to follow me until their last breath when I've fucked half the crew. Nah, count me out, mate. That, I'm not having that. That's a captain who clearly only cares about himself. There were times I noticed Lena's feel grid automatically change to another color. For example, when you get pulled over by the police, you're too deep in the red to lie or talk back to them, which is fair enough. Uh, most people would be nervous in this scenario but it does mean that these dialogue options are just for show and there's really just one scripted route to take. And Neocab still concludes with one of two rather rigid endings, neither of which get a firm grasp on the big issues it tries to tackle around mega corporations and their monopoly over personal data. 
but it's in the individual stories confined to the four doors of your Neo Cab where the game's excellent storytelling and narrative branching shines through. You pick up an anti-automation activist, a girl literally locked up in a mechanized suit that she can't take off until she's an adult who can legally make her own decisions. And there's a girl going on her first date who's scared she doesn't look enough like her profile picture. My favorite is Una, a quantum statistician able to gather data from multiple timelines. And as you might expect, she serves up a meta commentary on the importance and insignificance of the decisions that you make, which can feel obnoxious if a game forces it down your throat, but it's more sprinkled in through the conversations with Una and I really enjoyed it. So the field grid is just a clever way of masking Neocab's linear plot points, which initially disappointed me a bit once I realized I was actually getting less choice, not more. But in putting Lena's feelings on show, it gave the decisions that I could make more weight. There was a real sense of disappointment receiving four stars after a good chat. Had Lena's emotions gotten in the way of a five star rating, or was there something that I did wrong? Like what could I have done differently? Reflecting on the conversations, I think I prioritize my driver status over my passenger's best interests. And you might think they're one and the same, but Neocab asks enough challenging and philosophical questions that you won't be able to please everyone. It also highlights the self-centered decisions we make in video games, which are almost always for our own entertainment. We have omnipotent control, the ability to dictate what we see and the power to go back and do things differently. Star ratings might seem frivolous, but they're a real life barometer for how good someone is at their job. And you have control over that. If a taxi driver takes me where I need to go, they have done their job. But what counts as a five star interaction? A journey where I'm undisturbed or one where I can engage in conversation? It mostly depends on the passenger, right? So why should the driver suffer for that? So when we are able to get taxis again, be conscious of what star rating you give out. That's my advice. <laughs> Thanks for watching guys. I wanted to try something a bit different with this video. The idea of five star ratings just kind of popped into my head as I was playing this game. Um, and then I think this has now turned into more of an analysis of Neocab's branching narrative because I find that concept really interesting. And I probably just mashed, mashed those two ideas together uh, to see what happened. And that's what happened, what you just saw. So I hope it was good. <laughs> I wanted to put this bit on the end of this video to say thank you so much for 500 subscribers. Um, it's crazy. I, I don't know how that happened. <laughs> but I think most of you um, have come through this channel through my recent PS Now videos, which is great. But I did want to mention that I will be moving away from those videos for a bit. Um, which I'm now kind of worried about <laughs> because that content is obviously what's relevant to you. But the aim of this channel is to compare every video game subscription. So, Xbox Game Pass, EA Origin Access, even Uplay Plus, even Stadia maybe at some point. If there are some diehard Stadia fans on this channel. Probably not likely just yet. But every video game subscription does have something to offer. And the only way to find out which is the best is if we stay open-minded and look at all of them. <laughs> because if you're on PC, pri primarily like I am, you know, you have the pick of the bunch. You can choose whichever subscription you want. So I hope that even if you're a PS Now subscriber, you can still find some value in my Xbox Game Pass videos or whichever one it is. Because in a lot of cases, the games overlap and the video, the structure of the video is going to be pretty similar. So hopefully you still enjoy it. And then I want to make videos like this, which are more video game think pieces, I suppose you could call them, which hopefully appeal to everyone on this channel. Anyway, I'm rambling. What I really wanted to say is thank you so much to choose to watch this channel's content you didn't have to do that and i really appreciate that you did <laughs> uh, i sound like i'm kind of pleading with you to keep watching my stuff but i know i just wanted to say thank you i will come back to ps now content obviously and my next video is on the best games to play on ps now if you don't have the capability to stream like your internet connection isn't so good so look out for that next and i will be returning to ps now very soon so thanks so much for watching guys i really mean that uh, stay safe out there. We're, we're, we're chugging through quarantine, but we got to keep safe, keep others safe, and uh, ra rate your drivers five stars. Thanks for watching this video. Rate me five stars. Uh, give me five thumbs up. 
um, create five accounts and subscribe to this channel five times and I will see you in five minutes. Goodbye.